Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm reviewing another tank engine by Backman. In real life, the class of locomotives that I'm talking about today were very interesting and unusual. So they were built by the Americans, and they really look it as well, you can tell, but they didn't run in America, they ran basically in all sorts of places across the world, including the UK, and they were painted into some British liveries as well. So we've got this very interesting American looking loco, very obviously American, but running over here in Britain, which is quite a unique scenario, I think. And we'll talk a little bit more about the background of these locomotives later on. But for now, I might as well reveal that this is today's loco. It's made by Backman, and it's known as the USA 060T, or the USA Dock Tank. And these were produced exclusively for model rail, and they were first released back in 2016, so about eight years ago now. And they are still available on model rail's website. The price is £124.95 except for this one, Mansell, in the green, which is reduced down to £110. I bought mine from an exhibition a few years ago where the price was a little bit lower than £124.95. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was probably around £110 or something like that. So like I say, they first came out in 2016, and then I believe there was a second batch which was released in 2018, which introduced a couple of new liveries. So do bear in mind, if you choose to pick up one of these remaining examples, unless Model Rail have had another batch produced more recently, and I'm not sure that they have, then you are buying a model that is between six and eight years old. So it might be worth just inspecting the mechanism, giving it a clean, giving it a little bit of oil, just to make sure it's working as it should be. But today I'm gonna to take a fresh look at this. I'm gonna figure out whether this is worth the money and we'll also talk about what features and details this has and how it compares with more modern offerings of a similar sort of price so very interesting loco let's take a close look at it and let's see what this is like so as you can see the example i've got is in this longmore military railway blue livery which was always my favorite of the liveries offered by model rail i just think it seems quite fitting really given that these had a very strong military connection being world war ii era locomotives and let me show you the end of the box so the product code is mr-105 it is the usa class 060t number 300 and it is frank s ross in the lmr blue and it was produced exclusively for model rail and if you want to chip this with DCC, you need a six pin DCC decoder. And then if I show you the back of the box, you can see we've got a brief history on the class. So if you want to pause and read that, feel free to, although I will give you a bit of background on these in just a second. But for now, let's pull this loco out and see what this is like. It's been a long time since I've looked at one of these. So uh, yeah, should be pretty interesting to revisit. So it's in the usual kind of blister packaging. There's the loco, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Let's take a look at the instructions. And this does come with the modern style of Backman instructions. So first of all, accessories. I think different versions of the model must come with different accessories because I don't think mine comes with most of this stuff. Pretty sure mine's just got the brake rigging, but here you can see some of the different details that could come with these models. Bit about running in, lubrication, yeah, it just shows you where you need to add your lubricant on the axles. A little bit more on lubrication, the valve gear and such. How to remove the body, this is quite simple, it's just two screws, which is good. And then down at the bottom, you get a bit of a glimpse of what the mechanism is like, as well as to where the motor needs to be lubricated. And then over here and down, you can see there is the six pin DCC socket so that you can quite easily chip this one. And then on the back, just a little bit more about chipping and the warranty. So with that, let's move on and take a look at exactly what accessories you do get with this version. And yeah, it really does just look like brake rigging. So let's pull that off, stuck down. Okay, well, yep, yeah, it couldn't be simpler really, just brake rigging. Everything else then is presumably pre-fitted to the model. So I'll stick that back down and let's open it up and take a look at the finish. Here we go. All right. 
So I would say actually the finish on the boiler especially is pretty pleasing. I don't think the quality of the finish is quite as good as we see from Backman these days because I think modern Backman Locos are noticeably much better quality looking than the older ones. But uh, yeah, this one's definitely not too bad. It's definitely got a bit of satin to it. And if I lift it up, yeah, I would say the weight of the Loco is definitely not bad. So the bodywork is just made of plastic for the most part. So that's the tanks and the boiler, smoke box, etc. Yeah, those are plastic, but the lower body is die cast. So this one doesn't have a running plate or anything, but it is this kind of lower area where the steps are, the area around the buffer beam. All of this is metal. And yeah, the weight of this definitely doesn't seem that bad. I'll pop this on the scales in just a second and uh, tell you how this compares with other Locos. But yeah, I think for a Loco of this size, the weight definitely doesn't seem too bad. And yeah, there's a fair bit of detail to see on this model too, and we'll get to some of that in just a second. But for now, here is a bit of background on these interesting Locos in real life. These locomotives started out as the S100 class 060 tank engine as built by the United States Army Transportation Corps from 1942 for shunting duties in Europe and also North Africa during the Second World War. Following the war though, the engines of which there were 382 were purchased by all sorts of different railways around the world, including the Southern Railway in Great Britain, who purchased 14 examples at £2,500 each to replace the outdated B4, D1 and E1 class tanks that worked at Southampton docks. The S100 was chosen because it had a very short wheelbase, which was ideal for the tight curves at the docks, but it was also powerful enough to haul larger loads such as full passenger trains or even fully loaded goods trains. Unlike other members of the S100 class, the Southern Railway examples were modified slightly with the addition of steam heating, sliding cab windows, more lamp irons and quite a few other modifications besides. This is what really set these apart from the rest of the S100s that went to other places in the world. Today, all but four of the Southern examples have been withdrawn and scrapped, with the remainder surviving into preservation. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the Bankman USA tank in the LMR Blue. And as you can see, this is a well-presented model, and we'll talk about the level of detail and such in just a second. In terms of weight though, it does compare pretty favourably with other Locos. So it comes in at 203 grams, which is actually a little bit more than the Backman Johnson 1P, which is obviously a considerably larger Loco than this, so that's quite good. It's also much heavier than the Hornby B2 Peckett, which is a smaller loco than this, but it's also made entirely out of metal. So I would say given that this has a plastic body, the weight of this is fairly impressive. Although, yeah, it could have been quite a bit heavier, actually, if the boiler and such was made of metal. So like I say, this is a well-presented model, but it does seem to be missing quite a few key details. For example, the buffer beams are quite bare, which is unusual because the instructions showed that Backman's tooling does allow for different vacuum pipes and such to be fitted. And I thought to start with, maybe this version of the model just isn't supposed to have the vacuum pipes. Maybe the LMR version of the Loco in real life wasn't vacuum fitted. But looking at photos, it obviously was. So that's a little bit of a strange one. Perhaps though this was a feature added later in real life and this model depicts the Loco before that happened. Although why no screw link couplings were provided, I'm not too sure. And the buffers sadly are not sprung. This is quite an expensive model, so a bit of a surprise not to see sprung buffers on here. Same sort of thing with the cylinder drain cocks. The real things don't just look like two stubs like that. And things like the pipework beneath the cab on the model are just black, whereas on real life these would be sort of copper coloured as they are copper pipes. The only other real disappointment is the nameplate. In real life this is quite a beautiful separate piece and here on the model it is just a print on the side of the tank. I think for a model that is a number of years old now and costs £125 or so, a few etched nameplates would really not have gone amiss, and I think to fit an etched nameplate to this would really elevate the model. 
Otherwise though, there are some good features here which we'll talk about. So here's a better look at the finish. You can see certainly around the boiler, the finish is fairly satin, which looks good. And although the lining on this model isn't dreadfully complex, what is here has been done quite nicely. So you've got the red lining around the tanks here and also around the cab and coal bunker area, all done very nice and precisely. And even the wheels have the white lining around them, which is a very American look. You don't tend to see British locos with this feature, but you do see a lot of American locos with it. And so that's quite a nice nod to the American steam liveries, which I like. And then of course, you've got the LMR lettering and the running number, which looks great. And even though this print on the side of the tank is just that, a print, it's not a separate part, it has been done well, it's a high quality one. And then the buffer beams, of course, are separately painted as well, and the running number is printed onto it too. Starting from the bottom then, in terms of detail, we've got quite complex valve gear on this loco, which again is quite unusual for a British tank engine, where a lot of them have inside cylinders and valve gear. So it's quite nice to see this one on the outside, and it does seem to be well modelled. You can also see that the connecting rods drive the rear wheels and not the middle ones, which is not unheard of for a British tank engine, but it's certainly quite unusual once again. We've got detailed cylinders, which look pretty good. These are plastic, I believe, but the finish on those and such is absolutely fine. Above the buffer beams, we have separately fitted lamp brackets, and those also look fine. And the smoke box area is very detailed. It's a very American-looking smoke box door with this very interesting inverted handrail on the front. And it's also got these separately fitted steps on the side, and these stand out excellently as a result of being separately fitted. There's more handrails on the side of the smoke box, and on the other side we do have a bit of pipework going across the boiler as well. Up on top of the boiler, the metal fittings are just painted plastic, and as a result they don't look particularly good, and the dome really doesn't look that great. There's a very noticeable line around the circumference of it where the top section is separately fitted, and that line is prototypical, but the quality of this part isn't the best. You can see where it's been cut from the sprue. And again, the separate parts here are quite clearly just plastic, which contrasts a little bit with Backman's newer models, where these parts would look a lot more metallic, and in some cases would actually be made of metal. In terms of the cab area, we've got these separately glazed windows, which look pretty good from the outside, and around the side of the cab we have these separately fitted and metal handrails, which look pretty good. Beneath the cab there's a fair bit of detail too, including the pipework that I've already mentioned, and a fair amount of chassis detail. Inside the cab there is a fair amount of detail, although not as much as I've seen on other models. I do like the way the cab interior has been painted into an off-white, I think that looks fairly convincing. And there are some detailed controls, including the painted pipework, separately fitted regulator and such, and reasonably realistic looking gauges, although none of the gauges seem to have the actual gauges represented on them. And then around the back we've got this very pleasing grille effect on the windows, which looks good. More separately fitted lamp brackets on the back of the cab and also on the back of the coal bunker. The coal bunker itself is beautifully moulded, this kind of coal guard looks great, and we do have a pre-fitted coal load in there as well. And then finally, NEM tension lock couplings have been pre-fitted to both the front and the back of the loco, so it is truly ready to run. So like I say, it's a well-presented loco that has been beautifully painted, and it does have some good details on it. It does seem to be lacking a little bit though. The lack of sprung buffers is quite surprising as that's a ubiquitous feature these days. And it also seems to be particularly lacking in the accessories department. It's quite a surprise to see this come without screw link couplings or etched nameplates as I think if this model was to be re-released today, it would almost certainly have those features, particularly for the price. But otherwise, no major complaints, it's a good looking model of a very unusual and interesting prototype. So with that, let's get this down onto the track, let's see how it runs, and let's also talk about the mechanism. So there she is down onto the track, looking great in the LMR blue. I do like this livery quite a bit. I've got a couple of locos in this, I've got a War Department 280 in the same livery, and it looks just as good on that loco as well. But anyway, before I show you the performance, let's talk a little bit about the mechanism, which generally speaking, I would say is really good, although there is some room for improvement. 
First of all though, it has all wheel pickup and as you can see the pickups are wiper pickups and they actually follow the curved profile of the wheels which means that you can't see them from the outside of the model which is great. The base keeper plate is held on with screws and pulling these screws out allows you to completely remove the base keeper plate so that you can clean the pickups and such. Now in real life this loco was driven by the rear wheels but here in model form it's driven by the centre axle which just works a little bit better in model form because the models are less likely to jam up this way. But as you can also see we've got proper separate bearings on the driving axles which is really good to see, that's a quality feature. So to remove the body I left the front screw out from when I took the base keeper plate off and then I popped the back coupling off in order to reveal the rear screw and taking that screw out allows you to remove the body. And inside there's a pretty well designed if fairly bare bones chassis. The motor here is unfortunately just a three pole motor without a flywheel. Now five pole motors were perfectly common back in 2016 when this was released so I'm not too sure why this one only has a three pole motor and quite who decides a three pole motor in a shunting locomotive is a good idea I'm not sure but that does have a knock on effect on the performance. There's also this 6-pin DCC socket where there is ample room for a decoder, so chipping this should be no problem at all. But like I say, it's a bare-bones chassis, it doesn't have any lights or pre-fitted speakers on board. I suppose those are more modern features, but this loco is still available today, so I think it's worth noting. And then in terms of the back-to-back -back gauge, this is nice and consistent. It comes in at 14.3mm quite reliably, which is pretty close to the standard. So there you go, a pretty decent mechanism. I think the only thing I would really criticise would be the three-pole motor and lack of flywheel. Plenty of space inside here really for a better motor and a flywheel and I think that would have improved the performance. Speaking of performance then, let me show you how this runs. So yes, it does indeed work and as you can see we've got some lovely motion on the rods and valve gear there. Yeah, it all looks absolutely great as this thing runs along. Let's take a look at the gearing then. I'll run past you at 50% speed with this. So here we go, take a look at that. So it's reasonably speedy, I would say, but not criminally, so it's not flying along. I suppose as a shunting loco, it could have done with being a tiny bit slower. And I say that because the crawl really isn't the best. So with that, let me ease this up very, very slowly and try and show you how slow this thing can go. So I'm turning it up now. There we go, it's cut in there, let me try and slow down a little bit. As you can see it still goes, but it's quite coggy, it's not a smooth motion, particularly now actually. So yeah, it can crawl, but it's not very convincing, it's not a smooth motion. And it's also not that slow, I think I've seen other locos that can go much slower than this. And also more smoothly too, at these speeds. So I think a five pole motor would definitely have helped this one. Yeah, as you can see, it's going pretty slow now, but again, fairly coggy. Definitely better in reverse though. Yeah, that's actually not far off from smooth. At the higher speeds though, it's a completely different story. It's beautifully smooth at the higher speeds, even as sort of, well, low as that speed. It looks great. And the torque is fine as well. Let me demonstrate that. So I'll put my fingers in front of the buffers and turn it up. Even at lower speeds, I mean, that's 40. Doesn't care. Yeah, it's just moving as though there's no obstruction at all. And up to 50, yeah, absolutely fine. So this is a great example of a high torque mechanism. So it might just be a three pole motor, but there's certainly a good amount of power in that motor. And I have to say it does outperform quite a few better and larger motors than this in terms of torque, so that's not bad either. Speaking of pulling power then, the tractive effort comes in at 0.24 newtons, which is quite impressive because it's more than a Hornby Q6, but then again it's a little less powerful than most pannier tanks, including the Backman 64XX, 
which is quite a light one. So again, a little bit more metal work, I think, in the boiler would have just elevated this one a bit, but the pulling power was definitely not too bad, and for shunting and such, it should be pretty adequate. So I've set up a bit of a good train. It does have a rough southern theme. There's some vans there and some wagons. Not a massive train, but it should be enough to demonstrate this loco's abilities. So with that, let's attempt a coupling and check the height of the NEMS. Here we go. All right, let's try and do this slowly. And yeah, you know, the control's definitely not bad. I don't want to go on as though this is a really poor crawler because I've definitely seen a lot worse. And as you can see, by the way, it coupled up then, yeah, no problems at all. And actually the fact that it's slightly better in reverse makes it pretty ideal for backing up slowly to rolling stock and coupling. I don't know if all examples are like that though. Anyway, here we go, forwards. Let's try and do this steadily. Yeah, it's a little hard to get it to start smoothly. But once it's above a crawl, it is an, well, it's an exemplary performer. Really good. Okay, so I'll set this to about 40, I reckon. All right, so I've set up some other 060 tank engines around the layout, including an odd one out. So if you spot what that is, do comment down below and let me know. Um, running, though, and here it comes. I've got the S100, so this is kind of the original version of today's Loco. It's made by Riverossi, so a different manufacturer, and this is not the Southern Railway version of it, so this doesn't have any of the modifications made by the Southern Railway, but uh, hopefully you can see that it's the same thing. I believe this is HO scale though, so slightly smaller, but uh, yeah, in real life, started out as the same thing. And then on the inside line, I've got another 060 tank engine, but this one really is an American one. So American design and also ran in America as well. And you can see it's got the same sort of style to it, even though this one is, of course, in an American livery. But anyway, let's catch up with the Backman model and let's see how it's getting on. So in real life, the short wheelbase of these locos made them great at handling tight curves. And this one's coming up to the second radius now, so let's see how it gets on. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. So no issue with the gauge stopping it going around tight curves. No problems with torque in the motor and mechanism, as we've seen. And as a result, it does not slow down even a touch on the tighter curves there, which is exactly what you want. So truly, at the higher speeds, the performance of this thing is fantastic. So overall, I would say I really like this Loco. I think it looks pretty decent. Up close, it could do better, certainly, in terms of details and features, and we have seen better. But I think for a model that first came out eight years ago in 2016, this actually does hold up pretty well against more modern releases, as long as you don't look too close. I think for the price that these models currently fetch, though, they're certainly not bad value. £125 for a halfway modern tank engine these days really isn't that absurd. And while originally I think the price was quite hefty for these models, it really doesn't seem that far out of the ordinary by modern standards. So yeah, a better value model I think than it was. A little bit dated now by modern standards, but not too bad and the performance is certainly pretty pleasing. So I don't know how kind my scores for this are going to seem, but in terms of my feelings towards this, yeah, I, I like it. It's absolutely fine. And uh, I'm actually quite tempted to pick up one of the other examples in a different livery because I don't know how long they're going to be available for. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I'm certainly tempted. Let's have some ratings then for the Backman USA Dock Tank. The level of detail, I've given kind of a middle of the road score of three star. So on the plus side, the paintwork is excellent. I don't think I'd fault that at all, actually. It looks really good. And the model is full of separate details. Details inside the cab, separate handrails, lamp brackets, even brake rigging and things like that. So that's all fantastic. On the downside though, it doesn't have sprung buffers. Some people don't care about that feature, but I personally do. Uh, it doesn't have the separate nameplates to fit. I think that's quite an omission. Quite a few of the details look quite plasticky, so the whistles and safety valves and pipe work, they don't look the greatest, and the model doesn't have any lighting on board of any kind. Obviously, this is a model I'm reviewing in 2024, so that does become a relevant consideration now, I think. 
The performance is really, really good. At the higher speeds, it is marvelous. So there's torque to spare, handles the curves even with a load without slowing down. Really good mechanism from that point of view. And it is smooth as well at the higher speeds. Although at the low speeds, it's really not the best. It doesn't kick in at a dreadfully low speed. And at the slowest speed this Loco is capable of, it cogs quite a bit because of the three pole motor. So as a shunting Loco, that's a bit of an oversight, I think. So I've knocked it off one star for that. Otherwise though, great performance. The pulling power is 0.24 Newtons or around 17 coaches on straight and level track. I think that's pretty much what you'd expect for a loco of this size, although some 060 locos I've got that are similar to this are more powerful. I think given this loco's reputation for lots of power in real life, I think the loco's weight and pulling power could have been a little bit better, but it's certainly not terrible. The mechanism is three and a half star for me. On the plus side, it's very serviceable, so you can get the body off easily, the base keeper comes off without too much faffing so that you can access the whole thing and service it well. It's also got quality separate bearings and nice standard wiper pickups on every wheel. On the downside though, the motor is just a three pole one and it also doesn't have a flywheel. And this does seem pretty out of place really on a loco designed for shunting. So it's lost a couple of marks for the mechanism there, but again, generally it's okay. The quality then, I've given four and a half star. Yeah, the build quality is great. I don't think I saw any visible glue on this one and the decoration has been done without a hitch. However, on the downside, some of the molded parts such as the dome don't look the best and most of the body is just plastic. There is some metal inside the body and the sort of lower part of the body is die cast. A little bit more though, possibly in the boiler, would have just elevated this a little bit to make it feel better quality and of course to improve its traction as well. So 4.5, good quality, slight room for improvement. Okay, moving on to value then. So like I say, these are still available from Model Rail at their usual price of £124.95, except for the Mansell version, which is 110 That is the same price as in 2016, which means they haven't put the price up for these despite the inflation we've seen. Now, I think back in 2016, a basic model like this with relatively few features did seem like an awful lot to pay. Today though, with how expensive models are, this actually seems a little bit more reasonable. I still don't think it's a bargain because there are some better models even today available for about this price, but I think £125 or 110 if you want the green version really isn't too bad for this, so I've given it 4 star. Overall then, that is 7.39 out of 10 or a grade of D. Slightly more details, features and this would have gotten a higher grade I think. So into the logbook it goes, and it is in the top 10 actually, which is fairly impressive. Seventh place above the Hornby Lord Nelson and below the Hornby Standard Class 2MT. Yeah, if you want one of these, they are still in stock. They might not be forever. So if you're interested in getting one, now's probably a pretty good time. All right then folks, well thank you so much for joining me for yet another review. Please do comment down below and let me know what you think about this Loco. Is this something that would interest you these days? Or is it a little bit too dated for you to justify that kind of price tag these days? I'd be interested to know. Also, if you've got one of these and you got a different example, what were the accessories like? Because like I say, this one only came with brake rigging. And that was it, and the instruction showed quite a bit more than just brake rigging. Pretty sure that's correct for this example, because I've checked the original footage from my old review of this, and sure enough, that is all that was in the box from new, so it's not as though I've just lost it over the years. But I would be interested to know what sort of accessory parts other versions of this model came with. So if you know the answer to that, please do comment down below. For now though, thank you again for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon for another review. So you take care of yourselves and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, cheers folks, you take care.